So in the previous recap, Lux was enrolled in the All Girls Academy as a student but also as a handyman to help out and fulfill any work of the girls. So the headmistress relay made a competition, that is if anyone gets this red ticket from Lux, they will have Lux for 7 days for themselves, and they could do anything with him. Like really anything, so in it, Crulucifer got that ticket from Lux and told him to pretend to be her boyfriend because their family had arranged a political marriage for her with Balzaride. But then the main task came in when the night squadron was ordered on a ruins exploration, but their only crew Lucifer and Lux got in separately. But before that Lux had received a horn that might be a key to enter the core of the dungeon, but the ruins acknowledged crew Lucifer as the key because she wasn't from the real world. But she was the survivor of the ruins. Crew Lucifer tells Lux that her father found her in a ruin just like this one, and from the moment she started understanding things around her, her maid, servants, and her siblings made it clear with their behavior that Crew Lucifer was an adopted one, she was scared that no one would even want her. But Lux doesn't give a damn about her past as he considers her his own partner, however, Crew Lucifer has a friendly advice for Lux, that is to never believe in a woman blindly. So other than being found in the ruin and getting adopted, everything she told him about the way she was treated was a farce, she just likes to tease Lux. So Crew Lucifer can't believe that Lux was related to that cruel royal family, so he tells her that he and his mother and sister were kicked out of the royal court, then. This one time when their carriage fell off the cliff, his mother was injured and no one came to help them because the people were victims of the royal family's cruelty, so no one helped him. And his mother died, but as the flashback ended, Leisha arrives there to help them get out of this ruin, their exploration failed, and they didn't get any sort of weapons, moreover. Lux destroyed his mech, and the bill has been raised again on their heads, but then, Eri gave tea to Lux, and after drinking it, Lux passed out, Eri did this because Cruel Lucifer asked her to do so. She didn't want to drag Lux into her marriage problem any further, so she goes to the location to fight off Balzaride and Alterize alone, however. Alterize got her power sucked out of her by Balzaride and Cruel Lucifer didn't stand a chance against him, even though Cruel Lucifer had the sight to see her enemy's future movements. It didn't work on him, so when she was on the verge of defeat, Lux arrived there to face off against that dish of bag, Balzaride blocked Lux's first attack way too easily. So he found out right away that Balzaride's mech had stolen Crew Lucifer's future sight ability to predict his attack, it's a power of his mech that he can copy anyone's powers. And it's becoming a major pain in the ass for Lux, his power got almost depleted because of that copying ability of Balzaride. So Crew Lucifer told him to just leave her because everyone thinks of her as a tool since she was the key of the ruins, but Lux never once thought of her as a tool. He thinks of her as his precious girlfriend, and that's how he defeated the villain and saved the bride, Lux had defeated a great warrior of Alterais. And Alterais acknowledged his skills and gave her full support to Crew Lucifer and Lux's marriage, although their relationship started as a pretending couple. Now Crew Lucifer has genuinely fallen for him, and seeing Crew Lucifer was kissing Lux openly, Leisha couldn't hold herself back and came in to stop them. So now, as the story continues, our boy was forced by Shalice, Nacht and Telfar. And they turns him into a girl so that he could help them patrol the academy because there was an incident where there's a pervert going around the academy, but there. He found a girl talking to a cat like an innocent child, and the lecherous pervert showed up to target Lux, but that girl, Celestia, steps in to save Lux from that guy. That trespasser injured Lux with a knife and ran away, so Celestia took him to her room to patch his wound, Lux was barely containing himself because at noon he heard that Celestia despised men. So if she found out about him, that would be it for him, but Celestia had seen him for the first time at the academy, so Lux made up that he's a new girl around and named himself Luno. Celestia is the strongest in the academy, so that thought was bugging him, but his two girls were making his mood lighter around the park, then the next day. Celestia showed her intentions that the academy should kick Lux out because this academy is solely for girls. But Lux wanted to stay in the academy and wanted to help them fight the upcoming danger known as Ragnarok. But Celestia still wanted Lux to stay out of it as she takes full responsibility for defeating that monster alone, and naturally, Lux didn't want her to shoulder that burden alone. And as their fight was getting nowhere, Rely told them to duke it out with a duel in the field at the upcoming training camp, this training camp was held on an island. And Celestia trained them roughly from their day one, and everyone was beat after her training session, then a girl asked Lux to go to Celestia's room to give her a massage. He went along and gave her a nice massage, but before she got up, 
Lux turned into Luno again, and Celestia was pleased to meet her new friend again, she asked her to go on an outing with her. And Luno agreed, but her eyes were drawn to Lux's black sword device for a moment there, and after leaving her room, Lux was stopped by Sonia outside. She suspected Lux for an outsider but Krulucifer got there and cleared the air, then after she left them, Krulucifer warned him that she's the girl requesting Celestia to kick him out of the academy. So on another day, Luno goes out with Celestia as promised and she took him to the swimsuit shopping, seeing Celestia like this, Lux got embarrassed and ran away, then. After some time sitting under a nice tree shade, Celestia reveals that she doesn't despise men even in the slightest, but the episode ends there, and the new one starts. While everyone was at the beach flaunting their new and sexy swimsuits to Lux, but there, Celestia was looking for Luno. So Shalice once again was about to force Lux to turn him into a sexy chick with a bikini, so Lux runs away to protect his manly pride and bumps into Celestia, she still showed resentment towards Lux. But Lux remembers what she told him the other day, Celestia doesn't dislike men, in fact, the one who taught her fighting skills was Warg Arcadia, Lux's grandfather. So she wanted to do everything she could to protect Lux, then the day of their duel comes, and Lux still wasn't using his black knight mech to fight against Celestia, on the other side. Shalice and Tilfar caught the suspicious pervert at the camp and it turns out it was Sonia this whole time. She was ordered by neighboring kingdom to kill the potential future mech fighters from Astamuda Kingdom. Meanwhile, when Lux and Krulucifer were at a critical point in their fight, Ragnarok appears. And Celestia still goes off to face that monster, then Sonia and a guy arrives and started controlling Ragnarok, so while they were distracted, Sonia got them, and after some time, Celestia wakes up from being unconscious and tells Lux about her past, her teacher was Warg, his grandfather, but one day, she heard some really scandalous things about the nobles and told this to Warg, so Warg goes to the royals and reports it, but it turns out they were all involved in that scandal, and Warg and his lineage were kicked out from the royal family, but Lux doesn't care anymore about it and summons his black knight mech, Lux takes out Ragnarok himself. But the core was stolen by the perpetrators, well, at least one thing was settled, and Celestia realizes that Lux was actually Luno. She was mad at him, but not anymore as she accepts his enrollment in the academy, however, something was missing in Lux's memories of this place. And a big ruin emerges from the bottom of the ocean floor, then Relay reveals their real purpose for coming to this training camp. And now the story turns towards Feely, from their childhood, when Lux, his sibling, and a friends broke something, they blamed it all on Feely because of her timid behavior. But still Lux steps up and takes responsibility for breaking the things, even though he didn't break anything, just to protect Feely, so from there, their friendship started, and now. Even she is about to join the exploration of the ruins, but Leisha made some adjustments to his mech, giving him a cheat code to overcome his limiter, however, using it would surely kill him. So it wasn't much of an adjustment, then Ari, Noct, and Relay also joined the team to explore the ruins together with the Knight Squadron, and the ruins have 11 floors in total. And there they discover a space with an ecosystem where the ruins ecological maintenance system is still active, so as the team leader. Ari decides to split the team into two to cover more ground in their investigation, but Seals is left alone to explore, and she wants to go with Lux, but nothing can be done. So Lux tells her to join him later when she's done with her exploration, and Lux, Ari, and Noct pick up traces of a human-like figure and found a little girl, they call out to Krulucifer for help. And she Krulucifer tells Noct and Ari to join the other search team because the little girl could be a dangerous being, then Krulucifer touches the little girl, and her touch awakened her. She is Krulsh, and now considers Krulucifer as her master because she's a survivor of the ruins, she's a android that was created in the previous era but after this Ling sleep. Her memories were wiped out, so she explains that she can regain her memories by reaching the core of the ruins and provides them with more information about the beings called the creators who hold even higher authority then. Krulucifer in the ruins, meanwhile, Feely starts getting sick and weak for some reason, so Lux joins Telfar and Relay and they reach to the production area where Abyss are produced. And then the attacker from earlier activates the defense mode of the ruins, releasing a Diablo-class monster, not just one, but three in total, but despite Feely's deteriorating condition. Relay wants to continue with the exploration, Lux tries to persuade her to drop the idea, but she just won't listen, Feely summons her mech and goes alone so Lux follows her. And they end up in a dark room. then suddenly, they are teleported outside of the ruins, and Feely is slammed into an old building, Lux witnesses this and takes out the Diablo monster. Then he goes after Feely, 
but the building triggers some memories, reminding him that it was used for human experimentation, he finds Feely and wants to rescue her. But suddenly she transforms into something else and grabs Lux by the neck, attempting to kill him right there. So what happened to Feely that she turned against the guy she loves and how is she releared to this old human experimental lab? Find out in the third part of the recap but still. Please subscribe the channel so that I can bring more of the anime recap for you all.